what is Kubernetes? Since I know that folks watch these videos with a wide range of experience levels, let's start with the basics, containers. Containers are a way of containing your application in a dedicated runtime environment that won't clobber the dependencies of other applications. It's not a security boundary since an application could potentially have access to another application's resources. <clears throat> but apart from that, it's similar at a very high level to a light virtual machine. Docker made containers cool and popular, but as soon as you move from having all of your containers on one physical box or in a single virtual machine, things get complicated. And while many solutions have popped up to solve this, maybe even better solutions, Kubernetes is what has stuck around for most cases. So let's say that your company has adopted Kubernetes. You're a developer tasked with building applications that work well with Kubernetes. And you want to have a development environment to test your application on. You have a number of choices. You could go with a pared down version of what the company is actually using. If the company is hosting their Kubernetes cluster on AWS or Azure or Google Cloud or another provider, just get a smaller environment for testing. Instead of dozens or hundreds of nodes, get one or two nodes. But even if you have a super fast network connection, deploys will be slow enough to sometimes be annoying. So an entirely local environment may be better. And there are three main solutions for local Kubernetes environments that I have worked with. The first is Docker Desktop. Now, when you install Docker Desktop, you can turn on an option to run your containers in Kubernetes and Docker. This works, but I have a hard time remembering where the boundaries are. A second option is to use Minikube. This is also a single node Kubernetes cluster, and it's super easy to install and get up and running. But again, just like Docker Desktop, it's a single node. So if you're working on something that uses a daemon set to ensure that a single instance is running per node, it's hard to determine if things are really working correctly. Getting multiple nodes on your laptop used to be hard, but now you can get a real environment working in minimal time with Rancher. It's worth noting that a few weeks ago, I started playing with an early version of a tool from VMware, which offers a local Kubernetes environment as well, but that's still very early. Well, let's start our local Kubernetes journey and try to get the Docker, Minikube, and Rancher solutions working, along with setting up a tool to jump between all of them. The easiest to work with, though potentially the most confusing, is probably Docker Desktop. Now, I'm on a Mac, but if you use Windows, you can find this install process here. Yes, I'm sorry to all of you Windows users. I used to be a Windows user. Heck, I used to be a blue badge Microsoft employee, but now I'm on the Mac side. To install Docker on the Mac, visit the Docker webpage and download the installer. Yes, I talked about Homebrew before, but you're going to want to install this the regular way because using Brew will get you an older version. And then it's just a regular install. Once installed, enable Kubernetes. Along with the Docker toolset, this also installs kubectl, which is the main way that you work with Kubernetes. By the way, I pronounce it as kubectl, though I've heard other folks say kubectl or even kubectl. Anyway, Docker ships with an old version of kubectl, so you'll need to install that with Homebrew. Run brew install kubernetes-cli. You could also use brew install kubectl, but that's just an alias for Kubernetes CLI. Notice in the output for brew, it sees that you already have kubectl in user local bin. So to overwrite that, run the command listed, brew link dash dash overwrite Kubernetes CLI. I went ahead and grabbed a sample daemon set file for Fluent D, and I can run it here with kubectl apply dash f and the YAML file. Then kubectl get pods shows me the Fluent D pod running, and get nodes shows the single node. Great. So that's pretty easy, and the Docker desktop includes a few other tools that make working with pods and containers easier, like its dashboard and menu bar app. But what if you want to go simpler? Minikube may be right for you. Install Minikube by running brew install Minikube. I think it used to require VirtualBox to be installed, but now it seems to get you up and running without. Just follow the prompts, then run minikube start, and then I can run the same kubectl commands as before. But both of these examples are single node clusters. I used a daemon set to install Fluent D to each node. 
but that still means one node per single node cluster. If you want a local cluster that's a bit more realistic, using something like Rancher is a good way to go. The way Rancher works is to spin up a few virtual machines, and to do that, Rancher is going to require some dependencies to be installed first. I'll use brew cask install virtualbox vagrant to install both virtualbox and vagrant. Then clone the Rancher quick start repo from GitHub using git clone and the repo URL. Go into the folder, then vagrant folder, and depending on your hardware, you may want to make some changes to the config file. I have an 8-core iMac with 64 gigs of RAM, so I'll bump up the CPUs to 2, memory to 4000, and node count to 3. Now just run Vagrant up. This will take a while to get started, especially since it needs to download a virtual machine image and configure a bunch of VMs. When it's all done, you'll have a 3-node Kubernetes cluster, and I think that's pretty cool. But if you run kube control right now, which of our clusters are you getting? Well, run kube control config get context, and you'll see the context available. But our new quick start isn't there yet. Both the Docker and the Minikube install push their configs to the kube slash config file, but with Rancher, we need to do this manually. Go to the Rancher UI and grab the kube config file, and then paste it into a local file. PB paste is great for doing this kind of thing. But we still have two config files. The way to deal with this is to merge the files, which you can do by specifying a kubeconfig environment variable, which points to the files that you want to merge, running kubectl config view and piping that to config. But if you specify config as one of the files in the environment variable, piping to itself will truncate the file. So copy config to a new file, I'll call it origconfig, then run the command on it. Now, if I run kubectl config get context, I get a list of all the contexts. So to change the context to quick start, run kubectl config use context quick start. Now we can try that daemon set that we used earlier, and it works perfectly. There's one more thing I want to tackle. Changing context is a little harder than it should be. <laughs> okay, it's not actually that hard, but it's enough that I forget the command. There's a neat project called kubectl that makes it easier. Use brew install kubectl to install. Now run kubectl, and you have an interactive list of contexts to choose from. Using the merge trick and kubectl, it becomes really easy to switch between these local clusters and any cloud-based clusters that you may have access to. And you have just watched another video on TechnoEvangelist. I'm Matt Williams, and if you find videos like this interesting, consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon to get notified whenever a new video is posted. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.